Hello everyone. Welcome to our Nitro workshop today on Nitro on the go. What we're going to talk about today are the various ways you can use Nitro elements in a mobile interface. And the great thing about this is that you know Nitro really, whether you're on-premises or, or Office 365, these elements are going to be there for Nitro for the responsiveness and the ability to kind of re re change up what's uh, going up on the screen. Uh, as you can see, I'm kind of emulating something on my screen already. Um, but just a few housekeeping items before we get going. Uh, of course, my name is James Receiva with Crow Canyon, uh, as you all know. Uh, you should be seeing my screen with the mobile portal. If you have any questions, there is a questions box in the GoToWebinar panel. In the go to webinar controls panel, you should see questions box. If you have any questions at any point in time, pop them in there. Anything that is unclear or you want to go into in more depth, we can uh, we can certainly do that. Um, and that could be related to the mobile stuff or anything else that happens to be on your mind regarding Nitro, because uh, it's really for you guys to to learn what what's there, what you can do with it, and show you some tips and tricks that, that I've learned along the way uh, when dealing with this stuff. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is is mobile. And, and well, that's what we're talking about today is mobile. We're going to talk about mobile workspaces. We're going to talk about how you can use mobile uh, version of forms in a sense, and also talk about how you can do the Teams interface. So we get a question a lot, like how you know why don't we why don't you use a mobile app or something like that? Uh, quite honestly, I think everything you can do with Nitro and with the browser and with with SharePoint is you know you, you can do it through the browser, you can do it through the SharePoint app. There's a lot of a lot, a lot of flexibility there already. Kind of really doesn't, you know, ma makes the need for an app, a separate kind of app, obsolete. To be honest with you, and, and you know, if there's anything you have, any comments you have, you know, certainly share them with us, and you know, we're happy to take that feedback. But my experience and, and what I've seen, what I can do with just my day to day dealing with with uh, with with stuff, I'll, you know, maybe not the best thing in the world, but I'll wake up in the morning, grab my phone, and start checking my emails and uh, uh, start updating things on night, uh, you know, in our 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 system all based on SharePoint using Nitro. So uh, I have a lot of uh, experience with using Nitro in the mobile world. And I gotta be honest with you, I don't find a lot of things that I can't do from my mobile interface. And, you know, there's different ways you can highlight things in the mobile screen. There's different ways you can make it responsive. And that's what we're going to talk about today is the different ways that, the you know, you can configure Nitro elements to work for you on a mobile device. And we'll talk about a few things as we go there. I kind of wanted to start this conversation uh, talking about workspaces and, and SharePoint pages. And as you all know, you can go into a SharePoint page. You can pull it up on your, your mobile screen, on your mobile browser. Sometimes it looks okay, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, if you're using the classic mode especially, you're not going to get a great experience in the mobile browser, which is where Nitro comes into play. Again, whether you're using the classic mode or the modern UI, you're going to get, uh, you know, you're going, to, you're going to get these elements of Nitro that can be responsive and, and work in the mobile device. So um, that's, uh, uh, you know, so that's the benefit of it. You don't have to worry about what version you're on. Modern UI, though, in the modern UI of SharePoint, it does lend itself a lot better to mobile interfaces. If, if you're using that, uh, you know, in your environment, you should you know, probably well know that it does. You can kind of see on the screen here. This is a standard SharePoint page in the modern UI that has. <clears throat> kind of rearranged itself and, and, and does look okay. Microsoft did a lot of work in that realm, and I, I think they've done some good work in that realm. But certainly, there, there, there's room for improvement, and there's room for putting our stuff on top of it to make it look look decent, look look better in in the mobile interface. And so, the first thing you're going to notice here, you know, other than the fact that this is a standard SharePoint page uh, in the mobile view, we also have some elements here uh, of Nitro. We have a Quick Links element that we've configured uh, as you all know you can change the colors i just left it kind of static you know gray and want to mess around with the you know trying to figure out a color scheme that's going to work so we just left the gray and black and and that kind of works uh works very nicely there's going to be a list view and we actually uh new just just released like last week i think you're going to see a little different list view than what you see right here because i'm doing an emulation using the uh, f12 developer tools on a browser and showing there's this little uh, emulation button you can kind of toggle your device emulation go back to desktop toggle over to mobile and you kind of see how things look 
I'm actually going to be able to connect over and cast my device, my mobile phone, onto the screen. I'll do that a little bit later, and you'll see that this this section is going to look a little different. And that is, uh, we've actually developed our list view web part here. You know, we've added on to it <clears throat> to make it look a little more like what you might see in Power Apps. So if you've used Power Apps and you develop a list view over in Power Apps, you'll, you'll see kind of what I'm talking about and, and see what the elements are. I'll dig into that a little bit and kind of show you the settings of that that new feature we really just released last week. So um, if you haven't updated Nitro on your site yet, or if you're, uh, you can go ahead and do that, or if you are waiting for the next release of the secure Nitro Secure package for um, you know on-prem or whatever, then that should be included in the next release as well as the updated list view options. Again, available for the the classic UI as well as the modern UI. So your you know our classic UI customers are not losing that, or missing out on that. You see. You know, already, you know, the Nitro web parse, this is a search web part I added on here. They're already, they're kind of re, uh, you know, re reallocating themselves and re being responsive to the size of the screen. So if I you know, pull this out a little bit, you're going to see things change up. You know, this is still above this list view down here. But in reality, if I go to the desktop, you'll see that there's, this is how it looks on the desktop version. So you can kind of design it out, just kind of understand if things are in the same row, they're going to uh, stack on top of each other. So when you're designing out your, your page, you can do it in the desktop mode, that's fine, just know that things are gonna kind of stack on top of each other, and then you can always uh, pop onto your page with a, um, a mobile device to take a look at it, or you can do this emulation to kind of see what it looks like. But uh, ultimately, you know, all I've done here, and it's pretty straightforward, is, um, I don't know, what are you doing? <laughs> of course, it's gonna act a little funny. Let me just refresh the page, get back to kind of normal desktop mode. So what you know, edit the page and you add in these web parts as, as you do. So you can start out with a blank SharePoint page like I did uh, with this screen here. I can start out with a blank ASPS, ASPX page. Uh, let me just go ahead and uh, close that and see if we can get back to it. All right, a little bit of technical difficulty there, but it's really simple uh, editing the page. And so what's going to happen is all these tile web parts, you know, they're going to stack on top of each other. So that's just something you're going to need to to know as you're you're designing this out. Uh, elements across in the same row are going to stack on top of each other, and that, that's fine, just as long as you know that. So that way you can kind of see, okay, you know, it moves up here. If it's desktop, it moves over here. Down, you know, this this moves down over here. If it's mobile, so you can you, you can figure that out as you go along. But um. You know, within within the tool itself, there really aren't. You know, the thing is, it's it's already kind of designed to be in mobile, so there isn't really anything you need to do here different than what you're, you're doing today. Uh, you know, we've got the uh, the link tiles with par. We just create uh, a new new you know new tile setting and just add in our links and whatever we want to add in there. That's not going to be any different than what you're doing today. So to make this available for mobile, there's nothing you really need to do. It's already there. It's already it's already available for mobile. Pull, pull it up on the screen. You'll see. It's it's you know, on our portal page too, it's it's already there. And, you know, that being said, you can you can change things around, you can change the the header height, you know, maybe these boxes are a little too big and you think when, when you, you know, pull down to the mobile screen, they're still a little too big. Well, you have a lot of flexibility to change those things in the in the settings if you come over to the tiles and you can change the height of the header, you can change the height of the, the tiles themselves, uh, you can make them bigger, smaller, change the gap size. So you can play around with all that stuff to make it look good. And that's going to, um, you know, again, again, allow you to, to manipulate what it looks like. Um, and of course, this number is not going to matter if you go to mobile; it kind of all stacks on top of each other. So, uh, you, know, the, you know, that that'll just be one, you know, one column essentially. But really, there's nothing here specific saying this is a mobile setting, this is a desktop setting, because it, it just all kind of works and all kind of kind of, you know, changes up for you. Uh, the one thing we did make a big change to is this list view. And so what you're seeing on here is kind of the standard list view that you might see add into a page. Of course, there's different elements you can add to it. You can change whether it's a drop down or tabs across the top. That that's no problem. Um, but within this, you know, brand new feature I'm showing you showing you right now is you have this mobile mode. And so you switch over to mobile mode. There's a few things you can do here. One of the things you'll notice in mobile mode is that you, you there's only one option for a view. So whatever you want to show in that that mobile device, make sure you choose the view. If you want to have multiple views, you could simply have multiple web parts that show different views, and that that's one way to do it rather than having a drop down or tab. So there's there, there is that limitation. It's only showing one view at a time in in the uh, 
in the mobile mode of the list view. Listing mode, you could have normal or compact, so you can use different, different options there. Compact is just going to be the title of the item in your list. Normal gives you a little more details with these subtitles, so we could even put case ID, uh, requester, category. I'll show you what that looks like when I pull up my mobile emulation device, uh, you know, my mobile screen, you'll see what that looks like. You can also put in a separator, so you can put a piping with some uh, uh, spacing around it. We could even do, you know, if you want to do a space slash space and kind of get that in there. I like the piping because I think it just looks nice and, and kind of more aligned with what, what you'd see in mobile devices. You also see there's options for uh, images. So again, that's kind of similar to what you see with Power Apps is that you can put an image and this one, you know, it's going to have a static image, but uh, that's okay, default um, image or no image. I, I'm just going to choose no image for now and just you'll see what that looks like. So it's not a lot to it. Uh, we can enable it. If you disable it, what's going to happen is it's just going to look like the regular list view like we're just looking at just on, on the small screen. All right. So, you know, we can, I'll just show you, you can add in other fields here if you need to. You can remove fields if you don't want them. So I'll just leave that as is. We'll, we'll save those settings and you'll see what happens. So, all right. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to republish this. And doo -doo -doo. okay, so this is what it looks like in desktop mode. So just give me a second to pull it up on my my phone here. And I'm going to cast through the screens. Just give me a moment. Yeah, all right. Usually it tries to connect, doesn't work, then connects the second time. So uh, it does take a little time to do it. And there we go. Okay. Great, so here you see my mobile device uh, and I've actually, so kind of along the lines of, make, of why do you need a mobile app, answering that question, look at this. So you have these buttons here, they look like apps, right? I mean, this is basically just this Chrome br browser link that I've added to my homepage. And it's gonna take me directly to that mobile portal where we're just looking at, just click on that, and here it brings up the mobile portal automatically. Uh, so that is essentially, it looks like an app. Like no one's going to know any different. You know, if they're using this on a day-to-day -day basis, they're not going to really no notice a difference. So, uh, but you can see, you know, we've got that one column for the link tiles. Uh, you, you see, here's what I'm talking about with that list view. So now it looks a little different. You've got that case ID. You've got the, the name of the person requesting it. You've got the category. And then again, you could put whatever information you want in there. You could add an image there, to there if you want. But you can see it's all uh, uh, responsive, all kind of looks better in the mobile device and it's not, you know, it's extending off the screen. So that was a problem our list view had and that we just solved is that the list view row was extending off the screen. There's some information you couldn't see. It was, you'd have to like, you know, scroll over to the right to get to it. This brings it all into one view and makes it a lot easier, makes it more, uh, uh, you know, makes it a lot better for the mobile device to see it. And you can see our list view web part you know, our uh, list search web part just uh, shows up on here too. And it is also responsive to the size of the screen. So again, classic, modern, doesn't matter. It's going to work for you. Uh, and then, you know, we can go in and open up a, a, a ticket and uh, create a ticket through here if we wanted to through the screen. You know, again, it doesn't look that bad. We can come in here and create the ticket. And one thing we'll, we'll get into in just a minute is creating mobile. So you see it says mobile tab at the top. I created a specific mobile uh, you know, mobile tabs in here. So there's usually a lot more tabs. I'll show you in Nitro Forms in just a little bit. But you can create mobile specific tabs that are only going to show up when you access the form from a mobile device. So that might be useful if you have things like this. So uh, let's see. So it looks like this. You got ticket details, you got requester details, nicely laid out, one on top of the other. So what happens is, uh, let me cancel this. Let me go back to uh, the desktop. Get out of that. All right, let's go back to the desktop for a minute. And let me go to, you know, let's open up the same same link essentially in the desktop mode. You'll see that there are all these different tabs across the top that we didn't see in the mobile device. So again, ticket details, requester details laid out like this. So what I did is in the Nitro Forms Designer, uh, let me pop that open. Um, and get that, uh, this might just have to refresh it real quick. But you'll see that the design of the uh, of this employee tab is a little different because they used a table here 
versus the mobile tab where it's all on top of each other. The reason for that, like, look at this. This looks pretty good. In, in the mobile device, I think this looks, I mean, in a desktop device, it looks pretty good with the table. The problem with the table is that when you start doing the mobile mode, it's going to stack on top of each other, right? So you're going to have ticket detail. It's going to be like, you, you know, this column and then this column right below it, and then this column and then this column right below it. So it kind of all stacked and, you know, kind of, you know, alternating like that. And that doesn't look that great. It looks good here in desktop mode, but let's say we want to redesign it and kind of make it available for our uh, mobile mode. We can do that. And of course, Metro Forms is giving me, uh, of course, I left, let it sit and idle for a little bit. So let me go and get over to Metro Forms again, pop that open. And let's give this a minute to pop up. You see how I have it laid out with the different uh, different tables. So again, if I if I change that to the mobile, it's going to look a little, you know a little funky. So that's why I created the mobile tab, and it's basically the same thing: ticket details, requester details. But now I laid them out on top of each other, which is how it's going to look in the mobile device anyway. Uh, of course, in the mobile device, it's going to be a thinner screen. <clears throat> but we always have a way to go and take a look at that in our preview. You know, go come to our preview mode. Uh, you may be aware of some of you may have been using this already. You can use the different screen sizes up here at the top to see what, how it's going to look. So here's your desktop, and it doesn't have those mobile tabs. Here's your tablet, and then it's got those mobile tabs. And we're, we're all this is driven by the selection over here. You can see where it says display in at the tab level. Do you want it to display in both? Most people choose both. That's kind of the default. That's fine. But in some cases, you might want to show it only in the tablet. And so that way, you, we check it off and say, OK, only show this in the tablet mode. And then uh, you can see kind of th there's these different tabs that we've set up like that. So you can see what it looks like in tablet mode. And then, of course, in mobile mode, it looks looks pretty similar to what we were just looking at on my screen. So uh, you know, this is a way to make the form responsive to the type of device that someone's working on. Again, you might have different layouts that you want to present where your desktop layout works great for your desktop users, but your mobile layout might not look that great. And this is one way to get around that is, is to create a mobile specific form interface for your users to come in and, and interact with it. So it could have all the same stuff, all the same fields, just maybe laid out a little differently. Maybe there's sections instead of tabs, and you could do this all in one tab, uh, you know, all in one, uh, you know, use one tab, have multiple sections within that one tab. So that's, that's a possibility as well. So you can kind of play around with it and see what looks good. Great thing about it is you can come in here and hit the preview and, and see what it looks like before you publish it. And then, of course, ultimately, if you publish it and take a look at it on their mobile device, you'll see what it looks like. And you guys all know it's pretty easy to manipulate this stuff and, and change what it looks like. So, uh, so different options there for showing how things look in the desktop versus how things look in the mobile. Now, another cool thing about the forms designer that we have here for the mobile interface and this works for desktop too, but it's a little funkier because it's a little harder to access a camera. Maybe you don't have a webcam. You notice we have this barcode and ticket photo. You know, this photo is a thing where you can actually access the device's camera. So if you need to access your device's camera from the mobile device, this is a great way to do it. Now you can do this with, you know, it doesn't have to be a mobile tab or have to be a mobile interface. You can do this from a regular desktop you know, type of interface that you pull up on your mobile phone, that's fine too. But, uh, uh, you know, maybe making it specific for the mobile device makes more sense. I mean, it's kind of up to you. But just know that this is possible to to take photos and take this picture. And I'll show you in just a minute when I, I switch back over to my, my phone, what that looks like. Uh, so just real quick in the setup of this to show, kind of show you how that is, is enabled. Uh, it's a associated items column where looking at a document library to store the picture. So this is, it's going to be stored as a file. So we want to store it as a document library. Uh, so it's a basically just an associated items column with a document library in the back end. And it's really not much different than any other associated item. Uh, it, it really isn't. So you have your, 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 your list, which is I created this ticket photos document library, uh, created a view for it. I have a lookup column to my related ticket. And that's, I mean, otherwise it's pretty much exactly what you'd see in any other associated column. 
And then in the UI settings, you just have this tiles of preview. What that allows you to do is as you add pictures to your form, they'll pop up and actually you'll see thumbnails of those pictures on your form uh, without having to click at the, the link name or, you know, like an attachment's just gonna show you the, the, the string of the t attachment name, which doesn't really tell you a heck of a lot. But with tiles with preview here, what you'll see is actually thumbnail, kind of a thumbnail gallery of the photos that were added to the form. So that's a, it's a really cool, Way to do that if you have break fix tickets and you want your users to take pictures of like you know hey the water fountain's broken or falling off the wall take a picture of it you, you know you'll see it's it's there and that gets added directly to the form and then anyone working that ticket or work order or whatever it is can can respond to it you now let me like i said i promise you i'll show you what this looks like when you are actually on a mobile device so just give me a moment to switch back over to the mobile device all right come on here we go uh, so pop, hit my button here at once. Like I said, it's probably going to try to connect and then not work, and then I'll have to hit it, connect again. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I wish it was a little easier to toggle back and forth here, but for some reason when I when I start sharing this, I can't really do the things I normally would do on my desktop. So I uh, all right, there we go. Now we got it. All right, so let's go back to our mobile portal. And I think it's going to refresh that. Let me go to Hardware Trouble just to pull that one up. And you'll see, uh, I did try to clean my desk a little bit, so it <laughs> might be a little messy. Uh, so what we're, we're actually going to be using the uh, uh, device, the camera on my device. So you can see there's a you know, infinite loop. <laughs> yeah, like an infinite loop going if I wanted to. But you'll see there's, uh, you know, it basically it's, it's my camera, so my, my, my thing's a little dusty, but anyway. Um, you know, you can take a picture. Let me just take a picture of this bottle, like, I don't know, just to have a picture in there. So you take the picture, hit OK. Now that gets added to your 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 um, your device. It does, get, it does look a little scrunched here, but when I go and look at the photo on the actual, um, in the document library, it looks okay. It just kind of scrunches it up in this view, so don't get too concerned about that. But this is essentially uh, a way you can take pictures and add them to your uh, to, to your form from the mobile device. So it's actually going to access the device's camera, take the picture, and add it there. Uh, kind of along the same lines, we have this barcode scanning, uh, which allows you to, to pop open kind of the scanner. You got that scanner again. We can pop on the barcode. I was trying this one earlier, it didn't quite work, but you kind of get the sense, you know, the idea that you can pull up a barcode scanner and um, and scan a barcode. And I think that one's not quite the right type, but that's that's essentially it. Um, cancel that, stop sharing my camera there. Um, but yeah, so so through the mobile device, you can you can flip a barcode. So that could do a search, that could do a number of things, you know, there's form of an actions you can use when that, that gets filled out, maybe something takes place maybe do a query to pull up other items. And so there's a number of things you can do with that with it when it's a barcode scanning. Of course, it could also be a QR code scan as well. So it's barcode or QR code uh, uh, would work. So I think between those those three things, like creating a mobile tab that's specific for your mobile device, having the access to the barcode scanner, the, the, the actual camera on your phone, it, it, or, or it could be an iPad or a tablet, it doesn't have to be a phone. Uh, works great and then of course you have the option to take a picture of course if i save that that you know let me just uh example let me just put that in there all right so let's create example create that and i'll come and i can come back to it and see that picture uh in just a moment uh so you see here oh yeah example there it is <coughs> excuse me Click the load items in there. You know, there you see your picture in th in um, the mode, in the uh, kind of thumbnail mode, gallery mode. So, right there in your form. So again, you can see this on desktop too. Of course, if you wanted to switch over to the desktop, you see the same camera. Uh, you see the same uh, uh, image and photo that would all be there. So that's that that's all going to be there. Um, anyway, but I think it's a pretty cool feature to to leverage what your device is. In you know, your users will probably have these devices out in the floor. Uh, you can give them, like I said, a simple page like this. And it could really just be, you know, it doesn't have to be m m multiple tabs like this. It could just be one, one, you know, one of these tiles opens up the form, gives an option to take a photo. They submit the photo, and then, you know, then any, anyone can come back and, and look at that later. So, 
That's pretty yeah, cool. So. Now, that barcode scanning thing, I saw a green rectangle come up in the middle of it. Is that what you're supposed to put the barcode in that rectangle, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how it works. You, you, when you scan it, it's going to recognize the the rectangle, and um, yeah, it'll it'll recognize the barcode and put a, put a rectangle around it and scan it. Okay. Do we have settings on there for doing the different barcode kind of codes? I know there's a whole <laughs> bunch of barcode codes. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm gonna dig into that just a little bit. Um, and so if you uh, if you come over to here, there is a column type called Nitro Barcode Column. And that's what, that's what we're leveraging. It's got that little icon there for scanning. And within that, we have uh, different types that we can pull up, different barcode types. And these are the ones we support right now. 128, you know, EAN8, code 39. So there's, there's a few that we, we support. And then when you go and view this barcode, it's going to show it actually as actual barcode on the form. And then you can, you, so you can control what the barcode width and height are. So if... Uh, uh, so cancel that and go to preview mode. It should show that up in the uh, display form. So let me go to the display form of the item I just entered. And come over here. Oh shoot! Of course, it's not coming up, but uh, <laughs> best laid plans. But um, yeah, it should show that barcode even even here. So it'll match up with what the barcode is on the uh, on the on the on the item. Um, yeah. So you know. Again, inventory uh, items, you can do all that. But it, again, the, the the key thing is that you're pulling up this information from your mobile device, and so you don't have to do some crazy workaround. Or, or again, why do you need an app? You can just use the the the, the camera, you know, use this this barcode column, call up the camera, scan it, and and you're good to go. Uh, no need for an expensive uh, mobile app to to get that working for you. So some cool features there that you can use with the uh, the mobile device, the mobile uh, the scanning, the tick, the, you know, taking photos and whatnot. Uh, so um, you know, some really cool stuff there. Again, you could do that from the uh, you know from a kind of a portal page or workspace that you design, and uh, so it could be like this. Or you know, in our if you're using one of our out of the box products, you'll see we you know we have our our portal. Again, that doesn't look, it looks very good in in a mobile device. And the same idea. It's it's you know being responsive it's uh you know looking okay it, you know it's not like pushing things off the screen that you're not going to see it's got this nice menu on it so even if you don't build your own portal type of page or your own workspace page for mobile you know if you if you're using one of our out of the box products for for with a, a portal on it it's already got this kind of laid out and, and design in there so you don't have to do a lot you know really don't have to do anything you just you know just pull it up on your mobile device and there it is again like you saw on the um emulator here the or my, well, actually casting my phones we're in the actual phone uh let me start that view again just give me a minute here to pull it up all right and do it twice all right this should be doing it again now okay now mirror screen should come up again all right good so again you're using these uh you know the these apps or icons here that look like any other app you know the the index is going to be that that portal page is going to pull that open no one's going to know any different like pull this open this again since it's our portal we're hiding a lot of stuff here it doesn't look does this look like sharepoint it doesn't look like sharepoint i mean so no one's going to know they're in sharepoint it looks pretty good and we can control the colors the icons and all that exactly so we can do the colors uh, we can do the and, and sorry, I forgot to tell you guys that's on the <laughs> answering question. So oh, he's just I'm, just, I'm just popping in like from the peanut gallery here. Sorry, <laughs> it's okay. I forgot to introduce you. Um, but yeah, I mean it's 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 pretty it's pretty good. I mean it it, it it really good actually. I mean especially the portal where you don't have all the extraneous SharePoint stuff they don't want to worry about. And you can do this to some our branding app if you wanted to just do it on a, a regular SharePoint page and not use our portal. Uh, that we use uh, uh, have out of the box, that's fine too. Uh, that would work. All right, and then the final thing, actually, since I'm I'm already sharing my phone here, <laughs> one final thing we can take a look at is Teams. So if you're using Teams, and you're probably using the desktop version of Teams, you may or may not be using the mobile version of Teams, and you'll see that there's it's it's it really is well designed this is one thing microsoft did really well is design their teams app for 
uh, uh, for the mobile device pretty well. I think it looks great. And then also, I mean, within that, you know, even even within the Nitro side of things, we can pop open a channel. What I've done is we've created different tabs here within a channel. So if you go look at this on a desktop, you'll see this as, you know, horizontal tabs across the top in a, in a channel. Uh, but you can go and pull open our, uh, you know, again, portal homepage, kind of like what we're just looking at. Uh, we could pull up that mobile ASPX page I was, I was showing earlier, you know, those types of things. Uh, you know, submit new ticket link could be in there, so it pulls up the, the new ticket form. Again, all within your, your mobile device. Now, who needs a mobile app? You got it all there. It's, it's all it's all there. What more do you need? Um, and, you know, honestly, if there's anything you, you know missing, let let me know. So again, this is this view my tickets. We, this is the kind of the old style, just to kind of show you what we we improved with a view with that that view with that uh, uh, list view. This is kind of the old style where it's got these things across. It doesn't, you know, it's okay. It doesn't look that great. You can still get to what you need to get to. But I think the um, you know kind of the other version. If I go back to this uh, mobile portal. And show that list view. It looks, I think, it looks a lot better, a lot cleaner, uh, like that. You know, so it's kind of the, the differentiation. You know, that's the difference between the old style and the new style. You kind of see it right here. I like the new style, um, but the old style isn't isn't that bad either. I mean, it, it, let's be honest, it's, it's really not. <clears throat> of course, if you have a lot of different columns here, it's going to get kind of kind of crazy. We just limited it to just three, but um, yeah, that's 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 up to you. Um, yeah, that's 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 pretty much you know what you can do here. Uh, let's see, submit a new ticket, search a knowledge base. Even even searching stuff, it doesn't come up all that bad. I mean, you know, pull up a knowledge base article. It's going to be um, you know kind of designed for that that size of the screen. You can see the form itself. Again, Nitro form. It's already designed to to be uh, you know to be responsive, to be there. And again, like I said, that's there for on on premises customers, classic UI customers. It doesn't really matter. It, it's this all this stuff all you're seeing right now on the screen is there for uh for you guys to to use um you know like i said the list view improvement just came out last week so if you're if you need to update nitro to get it go ahead if you're waiting for the secure package update that should be coming in the next week or so and that that will be included in the next release for for nitro on prem um but yeah i mean in general even even beyond that just using the teams you know the teams interface in general it's not that bad. I mean, you just come in here. You got, you know, the you see the different conversations you have going on. Uh, you have, uh, you know, different chats that you can have with different. You know, of course, I only chat with the bot because no one likes talking to me in this one. Oh, that's so sad. No, that, that the bot's a good. Uh, uh, you know, we don't. You know, we're just using this for demos. But the, um, you know, you, you see, it's it's it, you got a lot of the same functionality you're going to see in Teams anyway. You can go to your calendar. You can go to your. Um, uh, any other files you see there's a nitro bot right there um but this all with you know again this is on my this is i'm just playing on my mobile device right now this is what's happening uh so it's pretty cool i mean i think there's a lot there you don't really need to uh um get too too in depth with uh, any kind of mobile you know mobile app kind of thing it's it's all that stuff's already there for you so you know, I think it's pretty good stuff uh, we do have a couple questions here. Uh, let's see. When I currently have a Nitro form creating classic SharePoint mode, when I open it from wireless, it has a scrolling horizontally uh, to both under general settings. Uh, okay. Oh, the tabs are defaulted to both under general settings. So, so yeah, so that's probably what's happening there is, is your, um, you know, so, so for, for the question that came in, what's happening is he's seeing the, the mobile when he opens the form on the mobile device, I think you're talking about the tabs go across the top. Is that right, Jerry? Like the tabs go to the uh, further to the right, and you kind of have to scroll to see them all. That, that's kind of where the um, that's kind of where the this 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 mobile tabbing type of thing comes into play. So if you have both set, you know, both enabled for these tabs, it's going to you know potentially you know, give you this, that the arrow, maybe you're talking about that arrow where you have to go like that to, to see other, uh, other tabs. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's, I mean, there's not much we can do there in the sense of, of responsiveness. I mean, the only thing I would, I would recommend is if you're going to be designing something for a mobile interface, one thing you could do, I just created these three tabs to separate out these different functions I was going to show you. Uh, but, you know, <clears throat> um, in reality, what you probably want to do is set everything up on one tab. 
to have it all under one mobile tab. You don't have to, you know, mobile tab is just what I called it for the demo, but you can call it whatever you want. But just lay it out like this and have different sections. So you could have a different section down below that has other fields that might normally be across the top in another tab over here. Uh, you, you can see when we have our, um, you know, this is kind of what we do in our, our portal is with the submit new ticket link, let me just pop this one open, is we use the sections instead of tabs. And it just makes a little more sense in this kind of screen and this kind of device. So it's kind of how why we designed the mobile, uh, designed the portal form the way we did. It was sort of with the mobile interface in mind that, you know, people, you know, you might not want work tickets from a mobile device, though you can. Uh, you know, more often than not, people are going to be submitting tickets from a mobile device, and we wanted to make it easy for them to do that. So this is, uh, um, yeah. So then, uh, so the, this is a kind of way you want to lay out those those tabs. Is maybe have those those uh, sections laid out under one tab, or 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 even just have a form. Well, even create it. Well, yeah, just have a tab that has a different different sections. There, it's probably the, the best way to do it. Uh, all right. So let me see. Let me actually. Jerry wanted to have. Maybe I can unmute him. Can you unmute him? Can you, can you unmute Jerry? Moi? Yeah. See. Moi? See. <laughs> there we go. Can you guys hear me? Yes, Jerry. Yes. Awesome. Now, yeah. All right. Now, um, yeah. I opened up one of the one of the portals that I created, or you know, under Nitro Forms. And when I open it, I I actually see the like on the on the top. I see the cancel, paste, cut, copy, attach file. I mean, just like how you would see in a normal desktop version. And underneath uh, it, I see like my drop downs, my tabs, but I can scroll to the right and to the left. I mean, so it's it's really like a desktop version that I'm trying to open. I mean, that it's opening and it's not, um, it's, it, it's, it's almost like it's not recognizing that it's the mobile view. Okay. Um, I might have to take a look at that. Um... Because you even see here, like the description field is is uh, limited to just the screen. You know, nothing's going over yeah, to the right. Yeah, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to see. And I can send you like a real quick uh, video of it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's yeah. take a look at that because that could be that could be something we um, need to to take a look at. So I'm just thinking cool, if we paste a, lot, paste a lot of content in here. I'm gonna paste a lot. Yeah. Content. I'll reach back out to you offline. That why I don't take your time on this right now. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, oh, I can't cut and paste, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, here, maybe I can do it here. There we go. It's kind of funny, like going between your uh, um, the desktop and let's see. There we go. I'm just seeing what happens if we if we do this. So let me save that. So case ID 10. So I mean, it's, it's all sitting on the screen. So yeah, Jerry, I think we'll, we'll have to take that one. Uh, um, yeah, you know, like you said, probably offline, send, send us a quick video of what you're looking at. And we'll see, because as you can see, I mean, this, what we've we've yeah. designed here at least is, is staying. Yeah, no, I like it. It's really clean. It's really, really nice. It's great. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, let's see. I, any other questions? So, yeah, I mean that kind of that kind of covers what I wanted to cover today with the the mobile um, mobile capabilities, mobile interface, uh, mobile design. Of course, you know if you come into this from the SharePoint app, uh, SharePoint app is going to, you know, just kind of talk about that real quick. I would recommend trying to go through the browser interface because I think the SharePoint app is just too crappy <laughs> so i don't want to say it, 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 it i don't like it i don't like the sharepoint app i'm sorry i just don't uh I, and because what it does is overwrites a lot of the stuff i'll go search for something and what happens is it pulls up a whole bunch of crap i don't need to see when really i want to see like my first you know my last few tickets it's not going to sort them like that it sorts from the beginning of time and and you know i don't need to see those things from the beginning of time uh so it it, it uh you know i don't like the sharepoint app so this is where where i kind of recommend if you want to push your users into using SharePoint on a mobile device, you can do this. I mean, it's really as simple as, and, and this is Chrome on a, on Android. I'm, sh I'm sure you can do something similar. Actually, I know you can do something similar on iPads or uh, iPhones. You hit this uh, this button here, and you see there's a add to home screen, uh, kind of down at the bottom. Let's see if I can 
kind of highlight it a little bit. I don't, I can't put my mouse on it, unfortunately, but it's kind of right there at the bottom, add to home screen. So that all that, what that's going to do is going to add that, that link to the home screen and you can put it, the user can put it wherever they want on their device. And, you know, it should, as long as they're staying logged into the same account, it should keep them logged in. Very rarely, they might need to re reauthenticate into the site, but their experience with it is going to be like, it's a mobile app. It, it's It's going to be, you know, very seamless for them in that sense that they're not going to feel like they're going to SharePoint and have to jump through a bunch of hoops to get done what they need to get done. It's, you can make it really front and center. Here's what you need to do. Here's what you can submit. Here's here's where you can input the information. Here's where you can see things if you wanted to see those um, those items. You got that list view that that can show them specifically what they uh, you know what they want. Let me see. Oh, there we go. Okay. This goes back to that that list view there. So, yeah. So I think uh, hopefully you guys found this useful in, in seeing some of the things you can do and how how Nitro works on a mobile device and how it can really you know drive it. Of course, there's other you know other elements. I'm showing you just the the, the quick links. I'm showing you the list view. I'm showing you the list search. Of course, there's other web parts that go you know dials and reports actually look okay. If we go over to um, uh, yeah, I was, I was, yeah, this was one other thing I wanted to show you. Um, if you go to like kind of the standard SharePoint page here, this is our our, our uh, you know homepage for our service desk, and you can see it still does that with the link tiles. It, it stacks them on top of each other. The reports are responsive to the size of the screen, so you can see the reports on the screen. Um, so it, you know other elements of our, our of our products work there too, not just what I'm showing you today, link tiles and um, you know other things. The, the reports will do this. Uh, list roll up will do the same. Um, you know, any of those other kind of UI web parts that you put on here, dials would, would work the same. It's all going to be responsive and it's all going to work very well and, and, and you know, natively in your in your mobile device. So it's going to look good. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions or if you have anything you want to go over in more detail on that, uh, we can do that. Um, Oh, well, like you said, James, feedback is really important as to what people need inside of mobile or expect expect inside of mobile because we are really committed to making the mobile experience as good as we can. You know, like you said, we don't necessarily need a mobile app, but our web parts, especially the list view, for example, and others, tiles and dials and reports, well adapted to the mobile device. So, uh, but you know, it's always room. I mean, maybe things we haven't thought of or some needs. Mm -hmm. What would be pictures, scanning, you know, things like that. Yeah, uh, I mean, but yeah, we got that stuff in there. I so, <laughs> so yeah, like yeah, like you're saying, you, you tell us what do you need, <laughs> what are you missing in the mobile world, and we'll we'll, right. we'll see what we can do to make it happen. Um, exactly. So, yeah, uh, good. So that uh, you know, I'll keep an eye on the questions box for any additional questions. But in the meantime, I'll. Just to kind of point out a few upcoming workshops we have. We're going to be talking about, you know, using the Teams app with Help Desk. We could talk a little bit about that today, but that's going to be coming up a more more in depth dive on that on June first. Uh, we're going to be talking. We're going to be revisiting the the workflows. So if you wanted to kind of take a look at the workflow designer again and or get some assistance with her, just kind of see what you know. If you haven't started using it yet, you kind of see what it's all about. We'll have that um, coming up on the eleventh. That's not too far away. And then the uh, so we have some webinars coming up, I believe. Yeah, there's one tomorrow on the uh, three different uh, cases of youth and asset and asset management and equipment tracking. We have one case where it's a distributed company; they do distribution of various beverages around the Northwest and Hawaii and Alaska, and they have a very dispersed workforce, but they're able to maintain the uh, coordination between the different locations using our asset management and help desk. Then there's one, that third case, the second case there would be about the nuclear power plant that's using it for critical essential assets with a high level of government regulation. That's mm -hmm. a, the largest nuclear power plant in North America, you know, proud to have them as a customer. And the third example is our Asset Journey program, which is, if you look at assetjourney.com, it's a sort of branch of Crow Canyon where we're working with the Australian um, retirement home industry to give them an asset management program and uh, legislative requirements for reporting that's required by uh, legislation they passed in New South Wales and eventually they're going to pass throughout the whole country, we think. 
and we're getting a lot of traction with that, working with our Australian partners. The only problem with that is it keeps me up very late at night because <laughs> what are they seven hours behind me in California? So it's like five a.m. Yeah. their day. Yeah, you know, I, I ended here, then I start that that next round of uh, of of uh, you know like another business going or something. But it's really interesting because it's feeding a lot of good information into how we should do our assets management because it's not just assets it's really equipment we're not talking about it assets here we're talking about equipment inside of a facility uh in this case it's what's inside the living units inside of the retirement home uh there's you know stoves refrigerators shuffle boards pool tables swimming pools all that stuff they have to maintain according to certain standards set by the legislation and they have to report on it with three-year 10-year plans capital expenditures a lot of stuff and then we tie our work order management system in with it and we've talked to other vendors like Epicor and uh, larger e ERP systems to coordinate with the whole thing into one unified whole so that they can, you know, work it out to have that meet those requirements. They have a deadline of July 1st this year to get all this in place. So there's a lot of activity going on that, you know, we hopefully extend that eventually to the uh, uh, U.S. world of basically facilities management, if not Retirement homes, we could include condominiums or complexes or campuses, and anywhere where there's a dispersed set of assets and they have to maintain them. Assets in this case is really equipment. Uh, it's really what we're talking about. Not really like computers and servers, but more fundamental stuff like air conditioners and stoves and refrigerators. Anyways, that's, the, what's, that's what the webinar next uh, tomorrow is on. And we have other ones coming. I don't think we... We haven't scheduled. We got to get some more on the schedule for sure. Yeah, I think I schedule out a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we'll be doing that. But you know, I got a few things coming up, and uh, yeah, if you guys have any suggestions and the topics you want to cover, you know, certainly let us know. Uh, we're happy to uh, to you know jump into it and take a look at you know. Yeah, like I said, it's, it's, these workshops are for you guys to you know understand what what Nitro is all about. If there's anything you want to dig into in more detail, we're happy to uh, take you on that journey. So good. All right. All Thanks, right. James. It was good, good, uh, good information. All right. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Have a great rest of your day. Talk. Take care. Talk soon.